What's up, team? I'm like somewhat situated here. <laughs> I was realizing my tea is like in a bad spot and I can't get to it and all the things. Hi. The new intro. Welcome back, Michael, Derek, Blake. Oh, you mean like the screen at the beginning? Yeah, that's uh, that's the sort of thing that happens when Joe throws things together. <laughs> I already had like all the moving backgrounds and stuff, and I just hadn't hadn't uh, hadn't done it like that. So, Carol, Carol has a dog. I think I saw this on Instagram. Is it? Uh, I keep wanting to say whistle, but that's not right. Whittle, witty, witty. I think I got it right. I might not be. I'm glad I could surprise you, Michael. Oh, uh, I'm tired, which means thinking is going to be fun. Super, super fun. Willow. I had to look it up, Carol. Um, this will be, I've been up since 4 a.m. Why? I, I was up at 5.30, but why? Okay, good to hear, Carol. I saw your post and was a little worried for you. Oh, that's good. I wish you go look up and see what it is I'm drinking. Throw some caffeine and let it go crazy. Oh, fun! I can just take a half a pill. That'd be exciting. Super exciting. All right. I feel like we should get going because there's a lot of different directions this could go. And I don't know which one we're going to land on. And... I'm going to lose some of my train of thought if I don't get going. Plus, plus, I feel like this could be, this could be fun. But if you have, if you have questions, so I guess, let me, let me kind of back up here. This nine and a half hours, it's like not even fair. Today's segment is what I want to do on a weekly basis. Okay. And essentially what I'm calling this is thinking time. Obviously you've seen that in the title already. You clicked, you got here, uh, which by the way, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. What's the bell thing? I see people on YouTube talk about like, hit the bell, but like what? Oh wait, is that the, that the, um, I'm such a non, non YouTuber. Um, is that like when you get like the notifications? Yes, Derek, got it. You're ahead of me. It like alerts you whenever things, when new posts go up for a person. As much as that would be really cool if you cared that much about the things that I do, I don't think I would ever turn that on. I don't think I recommend that one at all. So you can subscribe. Please don't hit the bell. <laughs> don't do that. So today's segment, this is a weekly thing because I'm really bad about the whole, this, these things are out of whack. The whole like spend time in your note making system, PKM, whatever you want to call it, text files. Whenever you spend time in these things and try to like do the thinking, uh, I feel like it's super helpful, but I, I am not one who has done this regularly and kind of need to do so because I have lots of things I've been thinking about, but I continue to like reprocess the research on them and I'm getting tired of doing that. So today we're going to start this process of Joe doing this. And I figured if I'm going to start doing this uh, regularly, I might as well live stream it, right? Why not? Sounds fun. That's how you do that, Blake. 
Interesting. I feel like you show up to all of these things, but I didn't realize that you could set the alerts for just live streams. That's kind of cool. Good job, YouTube. Okay, last time we we did a tour of my obsidian. And uh, I suppose we can just go over there. Welcome to Obsidian. And what I'm working on, if, if you were here for that tour, you've seen this before. This is my zero note. And I'm a little behind today, so I've got a few things that I didn't get filled out, which is fine. I'm not crazy particular about it. But the things that the things that I'm do like the, the places that I'm doing this thinking time process in would be underneath of this thinking maps. And I have all of my creative maps, which are like links and such for different types of content that I'm working on and such. Like here's the one for bookworm. I believe I need to get this one updated because I think that one's out now. Uh, but I want to build some maps out inside this thinking maps portion. That's where I'm going to end up spending some time today. I only do thinking for live streams. Oh, you catch NASA and SpaceX launches. Oh, as in the notifications don't do it just for live streams. Or maybe that's a, maybe that's like a YouTube app thing like app level and then you could tell it notify me when people I've subscribed to go live I could see that maybe so today's topic that I I want to try to externalize is around owning social media data and I I thought about this a little bit I want to set this up as its own map. And we're just gonna call it privacy and data. And obviously that doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. And what do I wanna do here? I wanna get this. I like having this stuff at the top. Does this work? Yeah, it does. Let's go here, because I know where it's at. Um, if you don't know what I just cheated and did. So, <laughs> you know what I should do? Sometimes whenever you watch, what's well, good to know, Michael. Sometimes whenever you watch um, gamers, if you, if you watch like gaming streams, sometimes they have the camera that like points down at their keyboard and mouse. And I feel like that would be super helpful sometimes because the things that I do, like I, I could, I should set something up like right here that shows you my keyboard, the stream deck and my mouse, because the way that I interact with these things is just kind of bonkers, even to me sometimes. So like I'm constantly switching between like hitting the stream deck, hitting extra buttons on my mouse. And what I just did was like a copy paste using buttons on the mouse. I don't even go to the keyboard for it because that is such a common thing that I end up, end up doing. Anyway, side note, because I can't help myself. All right, privacy and data. We now have a new map. We have it inside of the maps folder. And as you can see here, I've got a link that goes back to zero, privacy and data, magic, back and forth. Welcome to linking. So privacy and data, some of what I've been processing lately and we'll see if I can start getting some of this built out. And I feel like there are a lot of different types of privacy, lots of different types of data that uh, you should be cognizant of, that like you should be aware of what you're sharing and when. But I'm also aware of like how many things do I post on different networks online and the, the question mark here today is, should you own that data specifically in social media? So should you own 
your social media data. And I know that a lot of people like try to get all fancy with formatting and stuff. Like you can do some of this stuff, but I just like to leave it for the most part. But I'll do that just because it's pink and then I can see it a little bit better. Should you own your social media data? Uh, this, this is, so whenever I'm doing some of these thinking things, I feel like it's helpful to me to process things through the questions, which is why like I have a tendency whenever I make YouTube videos, like I tend to want to title them after a question because I like to just answer them. And I'm learning that that's just kind of how I process thoughts in general. So should you own your social media data? If no, well, let's, let's go that route. If no, what would that mean? Obviously we're gonna have an if yes down here. But if the answer is no, huh, interesting. So if you shouldn't own your social media data, what, what does that even, what does that lead us to? I guess that would beg the question of, can you own your data? Hmm, that's interesting. So maybe we should go that route. Instead of saying if no, let's say if yes, if you should own your social media data, we'll follow up with this another question. Can it be done? And knowing some of what I've been coming up with lately, I know the answer is yes to this. And it's because of all of like the API structures. So thanks to the wide prevalence of REST APIs. What, what do I even want to call these? On thanks to the wide prevalence of REST APIs created by most social media networks. Okay. What does it mean to own your data? Ooh. That's that's a good one. We have to come back to that. So, here's the thing. Thanks to the wide prevalence of REST APIs created by most social media networks, uh, I should, it shouldn't be created, provided by most social media networks. It's possible to create the data at a central location and push it out to these silos as a form of syndication. Now, part of Part of like me wanting to explore this is because there's there is a whole like framework here. Um, has anybody heard of like indie web? Indie web is a, a thing that is like specifically geared for this. And how do I want to do this? Uh, I don't have this link. I should at some point. That is not what I wanted. Okay, so at some point I'll create a link for the indie web. Hmm. So the indie web, let me let me process that one for you a little bit. Well, actually, let's just do this. Let's just create indie web. Uh
Hmm. Let's do this. Because I know the link here, indieweb.org. I want to put this in here. So IndieWeb, I know is, it, it's specifically for this. It's where to, how, it's like, how do you actually go through the process of creating something on your own system, your own server and data structure, and then letting people find it or access it in some form, whether it's pushing it out to other sites or it's being able to subscribe directly to that from a specific server. And I know that they have things like micro pub and micro sub as they refer to it. So publishing and subscribing. So that is, that is a lot of what they're getting at, but this indie web, uh, has quite a few things to it. So I'm just going to refer to micro pub micro sub. This is, uh, how, how do I explain this? Micro pub is a protocol by which hmm, protocol by which you can create posts on your website. And it, there's a bunch more to that. This is similar. Okay, so you can subscribe to somebody else's post there. Okay, I'm gonna move this to notes. All right, let's go back where we were. So IndieWeb. Um, so IndieWeb is kind of that process of creating things and subscribing to them to where you can own it, right? So because they have a whole protocol and a, a structure kind of already in place, it means that there's basically an, an expectation for how this could be done. Here, let me, let me show you something. Um, this is... Aaron Parecki, anybody know this guy? Um, he he's like the author of this indie web deal, and he has tons and tons. Like these are all of his posts. These are his social media posts, right? And these are all then pushed out to other places, depending on what he has like where he has chosen to send it. And he's got a whole list of things down here where he syndicates things. So he does do this and it's fascinating to me. And there are ways to pull like replies and likes and stuff mentions back into your website through like web mentions is what they call them. But basically what I'm getting at is if this is the case, like because this structure exists with this indie web system, I know that it's possible to own your social media data. But Blake has a good question of what does it mean to own your data? Maybe we should try to answer that. That may help us with our other. So what does it mean to own your data? If you own it, okay, so this is, there's schools of thought here. So let's just start making something here. Cause this is, this is potentially like trying to figure out what it is ahead of time and then put it down on the screen, type it out is probably not going to work here. So I know that so let's just go with this to own your data. Uh, let's, let's clarify this. What does it mean to own? your social media data. Okay. And I'm clarifying that knowing that this particular map has privacy and data kind of as a whole, like this is kind of the jumping off point here to own your social media data. 
guess I'm just rewording the sentence there. Welcome back to elementary school, where we're going to rephrase our question and start our answer off with it. <laughs> All right, to own your social media data means to have access to the data at any time. Without restriction. It's probably one way you could define it. Here's another way. Let's just use that same format to own your social media data. means to control the source of the posts from your own from your own what I want to say your own server your own file structure your own your own what your own computer your own notebook <laughs> like what how would I where do I even put that? Um to control the source of the posts from I'm just gonna call it Yes, Derek, infrastructure. I like that. To own your own social media data means to control the source of the posts from your own infrastructure. I like that. So like, okay, so here's two different ways of coming at this. And th this is this is good because I know that there are social media like export tools, like you can delete your data, like, or export your data from some of these, not all of them. I don't think, like if you wanted to export your Twitter data, like all of it, what would that look like? I, I don't even know if you could do that. that. That's why I say like to own it in its entirety means you would have to have access to it at any time without restriction. Does it mean you can delete it when you want or the metadata that's attached to any post? Um, as in you can control that. To own your social media data, have access to the data. Oh, that's, hmm. Because I'm talking about just read-only access, right? But maybe what you're talking about is like the whole update and delete piece. The source of the information? The focus is mostly on the source of the information, even if you lose some of the control. Control ownership of it when it's shared beyond your infrastructure. Yeah, even if I own, like even with this indie web thing that I'm talking about, if I control the core post and then I syndicate it out, uh, you lose control over the places where everybody else is viewing it. And I know that there's, uh, if you get into the indie web, like you can get really really deep into this there's a thing that they refer to uh what is it called a perma short link i think is what it's called the idea is that when you post things like when you syndicate them out elsewhere you should have a link back to the source for it so that if anything happens out there you can always get back to the original post for it and i'm working on doing some of this but it's not a simple thing Click the download button while logged in and download a zip file of your Twitter archive. So that is possible. But to, to uh, Blake's point, like, could you control all the metadata to it? Like, you don't really have control over that. So you wouldn't necessarily own it. So if you go off of this top one here, to have access to the data. Like the definition here of to own it within this definition automatically has restrictions. So I can't really say 
without restriction. Because it would mean... Okay, so this is this is probably the more this is this would be the way that social media companies interpret it. So let's let's do this. Um, let's call this technology companies. Uh, how do I want to call that? Like, basically, I want to say what is their definition of it. company's definition to own your social media data means to have the ability to download the data and I'm not even going to say at any time because I know that it's a bit of a loophole I think I want this to not be like that. I want it to be like that. Because I want this here. Okay. And then we're going to call this my definition. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, so if we're going off of theirs. Um, but yeah, you're right, Blake. I think because this is the trick. Like whenever you use their site and whenever you agree to post things on their site, by default, almost I, I don't know of any of them where they say that in the terms that you own what you post on their site. It's always that they own it and that they are in control of it. And then they will provide tools for you to access it. Thus the Twitter archive, like Michael's calling out. So like they would say, like to own it would mean being able to download it. So then my definition of that is kind of what we were working through. It's like to own your social media data would mean to control the source of the posts from your own infrastructure with full capabilities to create, read, update, and delete any aspect of the data at any time. There you go. Obviously, that's pulling in the crud side of things. Create, read, update, delete. Um, okay. So, with those definitions in place, Evening and afternoon. Hi, Martin. <laughs> How goes it? Welcome to the party. Do you have your Obsidian OS figured out yet? I had to like do my best to ignore Obsidian OS because it was going to eat my life, I think, if I tried to explore that. Okay, with these definitions in place... Thanks to the question there, Blake. What does it mean to own your social media data? We've got the tech company definition. We have our definition here. So then the question comes, should you? Should you own your social media data? Now, let's, let's ignore the fact that technically speaking, in order to own your social media data, the way that I have defined owning your social media data, in order to do that, don't tell me that, Martin. In order to do that, in today's world, you got to be fairly technically savvy. Like the stuff that I've been working on for it is not super simple. Some of that is me trying to simplify what they have. 
what they've done. So I'm actually like building some things that would make this a very big uh, sigh of relief for people getting into it. So let's let's do this instead of this question. Should you own your social media data? Uh, I feel like this is a separate question I'm answering here. As I'm reading that, I'm realizing like I'm not really answering that question. Should you own your social media data? Thanks to the wide prevalence of APIs. Uh, this is more of a can you own your social media data? Mastodon's been getting a bit of a mention. Yeah, I have a Mastodon account. Mastodon.social is where I'm at on that. Uh, the stuff that I actually, like the posts that you saw on Twitter for today, I I syndicate those to micro.blog and to Mastodon. So they go both, all, all places. It goes to Twitter, Mastodon, and micro.blog every time I send one of those. Um, in the process of trying to get that to expand out to some other things. So I'm, I am working on a Jekyll gym, a plugin, if you would, that adds a Jekyll command for syndicating to where you could hit like Jekyll syndicate and it would take your posts and send them out but it, it kind of requires some of the indie web backend. How much do you care and what aspect you care about? So let's say it's a good question. Good way to put that Blake. Maybe you should be doing this one. Should you own your social media data? This is making me wonder if I need to rename this. Notice this updated one link in one file. So I just renamed this document, social media privacy and data. If I go back to this, hey, guess what? It renamed it there too in my zero note magic. Welcome to Obsidian. Um, I suppose I don't need this here. Sometimes I like to put those titles there. That time I didn't. Used to use Facebook a lot. Uh, you have that plugin? for Jekyll that syndicates. Did you take mine? I'm in the middle of building it. If you lost all your Twitter posts, you wouldn't care. But if you lost all your Facebook stuff, you would care. So let's just put some questions here. Do you post things to social? social media that you don't store elsewhere. Um, are you concerned about who can see your social media posts? Oh, the Obsidian rename thing. Is that a plugin? I thought that was standard. I thought it was like a standard Obsidian feature. So if you post things on social media that you don't store elsewhere, you probably are concerned about this. If you are worried about, let's, let's say worried instead of concerned. If you're worried about who can see your social media posts, um, uh, 
does it bother you that the social media companies are making money off of you? I mean, there's all sorts of questions here, right? If you're worried about who can see it, you're probably worried about it staying out there if you want to delete it. Yeah, true. This is okay. So you can start getting into some ramifications here very quickly. So if. If, if, if the Okay, so the mechanics here You post something on social media That post gets likes, comments, etc, etc Replies, favorites, whatever you want to call the things Whenever that happens uh, It ends up it's like a feedback loop to you, one. Two, whenever that happens, it makes it possible for them to push it to other people and then potentially sell them things to get them to stay on the system more, ads, et cetera, et cetera. We know how all this works. Um, so... You bring up some good points here, Blake. If you don't care if the data disappears, there's no point in owning it. Let's let's put that in here. If you don't care if it disappears. There's no purpose in ownership of that data if if you are concerned well no i was thinking about if you're concerned about what they're doing with that data then you should probably own it but it doesn't matter because you wouldn't syndicate it to them anyway the word it your data if you don't care if your data disappears there's no purpose in ownership of that data okay here here we go if you are worried about if you hmm It is a fun mental exercise. Welcome to the process. If you are worried about data, uh, how do I say that? Not data disappearance, not uh, data loss. Wow, surprised I couldn't come up with that one. If you're worried about data loss, you should have a backup of it somewhere. Okay, so if you're worried about data loss, let's call it social media data loss. You should have a backup, a backup of the data. Okay, so that, interestingly enough, that brings us back up to the tech company definition. Like if you're worried about it, that data disappearing, guess what? We can give you a backup of that data. You can download it. You can get an export of it, right? Um, <laughs> something I want to do here quick, because this is bugging me. Let's go to this indie web deal. This micro pub and micro sub bit. I want to get those linked. Uh, and it's primarily because from within these, I know that there are server endpoints 
and client endpoints involved. I'm not going to go into those right now. Uh, Microsub has the th same thing. <laughs> if you're worried about social media data loss, then you should have a backup of it. Which begs the question... How should you back up your social media data? Okay, let's let's take me as an example here since I'm kind of going down this path, right? Now, in my particular case, I know that I don't want what I post to social media to disappear. And and I say that as an online creator who knows that links that I create online is the currency of attention, and I'm aware that whenever I've got those links and I've got things that I create, it needs to come back to a central place at some point because that is how my ideas can spread. Okay, so I don't want that data to disappear at all. That's, that's my preference there. Now, if that's the case, then I need to make sure that I have a backup of that somewhere that can be posted elsewhere or in as many places as I possibly can. Okay. Now, in my case, I know that one, like this, this comes back to diversification as well. There are things like Twitter, Mastodon, like was brought up earlier. Uh, Martin, I believe, brought that up. As Mastodon has come up, uh, what's the other one? Parlor, I've seen pop up. I don't even know if they have an API. I don't even know if I want to be on Parlor. I have an account there, and I, I don't even know that I've <laughs> opened the app. I know I don't have the app. Anyway, there are a bunch of these Truth Social, I guess, Trump's thing. Who knows if any of these are even worth being on? That's beside the point. Just ignore the fact of like what the biases are on each of these. Tumblr. Whenever I have a site that I'm going to take on, Instagram, TikTok, whatever these things are, perfect world, I can post one thing and it goes to all those different places because I know that... Uh, Discord, maybe? We might have to come back to that one. I know that whenever you post it to all these different places, there are people who are on multiple of them, but sometimes they don't want to feel like they're missing out and have to be on multiple of them. For example, if you want to be on Mastodon and you want to get all of my posts, you can do that. Mastodon.social, Joe Bulig, you'll find there, find me there. So you can do that. You're not going to miss out on anything that I'm posting on Twitter because it also goes there. You're not gonna miss out on those things. Okay, so it, it does go both places. Same thing with micro.blog. Anything I post on Twitter, it's also going there. So you're not gonna miss out on anything. Not everybody does that, and, I, and I'm aware of that. So that's abnormal. I know that I want to have things diversified across all of these because Twitter could shut down at some point. That's no dig on Elon Musk, but I know that that's a possibility. I know that it's possible that Mastodon's network gets shut down. It's 
a, a thing that could happen. Uh, for a long time, we talked about how like Slack was a big deal and that is where people were setting up entire communities. And as Martin calls out, Discord has propped up now. Uh, I do have the Joe Bulig Discord set up. I don't think anything has happened there in a very long time. I don't do anything there. I'm not sure if I should. Maybe that's something I'll do. I'll start posting all of these things. Actually, that would be kind of interesting to take a feed of all the things I'm going to be storing as my own data and posting them to a dedicated feed in Discord. That would be kind of interesting. I say that knowing that there's, what do they call it? Notes, videos, photos, but you can also track like likes, bookmarks, links from across the web. But if you own all of that, you don't necessarily have to syndicate it to all the same places. And you could start creating your own types. Like I've been playing around with how to track and publicize uh, the time I've spent in bed at night because like number of hours of sleep is a little bit tricky and posting my step count for the day, like having that automatically happen and be public. Like I'm totally cool with that sort of thing. Multiple places build resilience. Exactly. Like that's, that's kind of what I'm working towards. It's not a simple process to get there though. Not right now. And that's what I've been trying to like, okay, what are the different components out there? Like you can use things like if this, then that you can use Zapier. Uh, what's the other one? Make there's a, there's a handful of these things, like these services that will do this stuff for you. But the trick with all of those is they generally want to create their own links in order to link things back to the original source. And if those link shortener services shut down, it becomes a bit of a problem. Like if this and that was a big deal for a while and then they had some changes and now I don't know, like, I mean, people still use it. I don't, I used to use it a lot, but I got tired of like, they would change like data formats on things and things got to be a little flaky and it made it harder, which is why I now run like my own API server cross between Slack and an old school forum. I could see that one. The trouble with Discord is that it's, uh, it's, it's, it, uh, it almost dictates that you be on it all the time, which was some of the angst with Slack, right? Is some of the angst with Slack or teams. Uh, I say that knowing that I've got teams and Discord and Slack open right now. <laughs> so yes, if you really want, I've got the Joe Bulig Discord open right now. So there's that. So if you want to post things there, I will see the chat there as well. Uh, that is a thing. Um, so basically what I'm getting at is I want to be able to post in one place and it goes a whole bunch of different places. And by doing so, it means that I'm a lot more resilient to like the fickleness of social media. And I, and you know, they come and go, right? Snapchat was a thing for a while. Uh, I know that it's still around, but even like teenagers don't seem to use it that much. I guess I don't need these questions anymore. The, the beauty of this is that you can edit these things in the future. This might bring me to another question. If you own... Okay, here's, here's something I need to do. I've got this titled social media privacy and data, which means that the term social media is redundant here. Uh, where all have I used that? Let's 
Is that magic or what? <laughs> Did I just blow your mind? <laughs> so everywhere that I had social media in there, I just pulled it out. To own your own, to own your data, yeah. Now I've got that all cleaned up. Okay, if you own your data, can or should you syndicate it elsewhere? Let's let's say if you own your data. No, let's say this. If you store the data on your own infrastructure. Okay, here we go. To use Derek's word. If you store the data on your own infrastructure, how can you then syndicate that data to the, I'm gonna use social media here, the social media silos. That's what I'm gonna call them. And I am going to simply link a thing here, Jekyll Posse. Uh, this is a plugin. This is the plugin I was talking about that I'm in the middle of building. And I've already got a note for it. It doesn't have anything in it, but I wanted to create the note for it because that's what I'm working on. Basically, what I want to do, I want to make this possible for anybody to set up a new website for free, set up an endpoint for free, and own all of this information for free and have it automatically go out to all these different places, again, for free. This is possible, and I'm doing it right now, uh, not cleanly, which is what this is designed to do. So what I want to do is take this indie web concept and create a process through which you could create your own website on GitHub pages. I'll use the terms that people know here. You can create a GitHub pages account website, pull in a theme that I want to make available, which that's a ways down the road. I haven't even got to that yet. Add a plug into it, set up the stuff for it, click a link button to set up the endpoint for you. And again, these are all things that are real simple how to's like it's literally click, copy, paste stuff is all we're talking about. And once you have done that, adding this Jekyll Posse plugin to it, and it does all of that stuff for you. It's, it's literally, I kid you not, it is go to a website, type in your stuff, hit send, and it goes. If it's free, then the data is the product. Possibly depends on, so the, the, the data is the product concept. The, the people who would be owning it outside of yourself. I, I, I shouldn't say that the people who have access to it would be GitHub in this case, in, in the process that I'm talking to talking about. It would be GitHub. They would have access to the markdown files that are created in this process. What else? The endpoint stuff doesn't store any data. It's just a front end server. There's not even a database on it. It just passes things from one place to another. Um. Where else would it be? It would be on your computer if you cloned it because it would be a Git repository, Michael. The data would end up on the social media sites if you use this Posse system, which by the way, Posse is, I should probably do this. Posse, uh, it refers to 
post own site, syndicate elsewhere. That's up what that refers to. I could probably spell that out in more detail at some point. Paying for the API servers. Uh, that would be, right now I've got that going through Heroku. Just one of the free apps that's there. So that's a good point. Heroku would technically have access to it if they're, they would have to be storing all of the data about the requests that are coming in and out of that. Here's, here's a follow-up question to that though. Would it matter? Because the reason I'm saying this is, at least in my case, that data is always cloned back to, like my, my system automatically pulls it. So it's always on my system. It does like a check every few minutes to see if there's an update or not, and then pulls it if it is, if there is. If that's the case, like I've always got it in my spot. My intention is to get it a bunch of places. So if that's where it lands, would it be a problem if GitHub or in this case, Microsoft, Microsoft owns GitHub. So Microsoft would have access to all of that data that I'm syndicating elsewhere already. And then Heroku could who owns Heroku? Is that Salesforce? Salesforce, I believe, owns Heroku. So Salesforce would be able to... I assume... You have a good point. I assume they're probably recording those requests. That seems like a lot of data to record. So yeah, I think it would be those two. So then that would beg the question. <laughs> would it be a concern if someone else also owns the data? Is it a concern if another company or person is also able to store the entirety of your data? Yeah, it's true, Blake. Yeah. They're trying to optimize and make things better. Yeah, if it's if the goal is to post to other sites, they would own a copy of it, yes. Or in this case, they would own a copy of a portion of it. Because what I'm talking about with like storing sleep or step count data, I don't think I would actually syndicate that anywhere. The only place that that would live would be on my site, which would mean that the only place it lives would be on the GitHub account. Actually, some of the way I've been posting into this, going back to your thing, Michael, is who's paying for the API servers. Um, in my particular case, I am. <laughs> my The API server that I'm using for it actually runs on my computer. It doesn't actually live anywhere else. I've got it set up to where I can run it through a Heroku app, but I have one running on my computer and just send the API calls to a local host endpoint and it then sends it to GitHub, <laughs> so it doesn't live anywhere. <laughs> that's 
a development environment trying to get it up and running though. <laughs> I, had to, I forgot about that. <laughs> We're in the weeds on technical stuff now. Um, personally, I don't know that I would run into problems with someone being able to access all of it. I'm trying to get it to where, like for example, the code for joebulig.com, which is where all of this is going to live for me personally. Um, that code right now is private for a variety of reasons. Uh, in order to get some things out the door, I think there's a couple API keys that are in that code base, but I'm in the middle of rotating those out at some point. So because I'm looking at rotating those out, um, I'll end up making that public, which I want to make public because there's a lot of code that's in that that would help other people do the same thing. Anyway, lots and lots of thoughts here. I gotta go. This has been fun. We gotta do this more often. Now, here's the thing with what we just did. Obviously, I'm not done with this. This is this is something that's going to expand. Let me do this. As we build these out, this area here will continue to grow. And we're going to come upon other topics that we've talked about over time. And as that happens, we'll have more and more of these links show up. When's the next bookworm? Tomorrow. Tomorrow at, I'll get the time for you. We've like changed times specifically a couple at a couple points. Tomorrow at two o'clock central is when that one is. I think Thursday is where Bookworm's going to land long term, like indefinitely, I should say. Because uh, Mike and I both like having our Fridays and he has, he records focused every other week on Thursdays. It's like, well, I can do Thursdays for Bookworm. So if we do that, it means that we end up with the same day for him. Pretty easy. He just records podcasts every Thursday. There you go. Uh, as we were talking about Discord, if you really want, there's a link to that Discord in the description for this live stream. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know. Subscribe, all the things, as we talked about earlier. Uh, and we'll, we'll be back here next week. I don't know if we'll continue the same topic. Probably not. We'll see where my brain goes. It may end up back there, but I have a suspicion there's something specific that'll come up between here and there. If you have something specific, let me know. And we'll go with it. All right. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for thinking with me. That went a whole bunch of different places. I was not ready to go, but that's the process. Welcome to it. All right. I'm going to split. Take care, team. See you next time.